reproduction in human beings reproduction is a process of giving is a process of giving Christ to a new generation as you have seen in Hararon the reproduction is a common characteristic in all animals all animals usually show some of the characteristics in common like animals they feed animals they move animals they die animals remove west animals reproduce so reproduction as you have seen there is a common characteristic of all animals which entails process of giving generation future generation animal produces young ones of their own kind if the human beings they produce other smaller human beings in our case we call them babies or children for other animals like cow they produce young ones calf and these young ones are the ones that now ensures future generation or a new generation so for any reproduction to occur in animals both the male and female reproduction are, have to be informed in male reproduction the most important part is the male reproductive cell which is usually called the sperm the sperm as we know it is produced in the part called testes the testes are this part here the testes are the one here which produces the sperms and once the sperms are produced here they are usually stored in this part called epipendimis and after they are stored there they are released out through this tube here called vas deferens all the way to the urethra this part is the one that we call the urethra urethra is a very long tube that ensures that they both the urine and the sperm comes out of the penis then we have this part here which we call the penis penis it it's uh its work is to introduce now the sperm to the vagina then we have the prostate glands and this one they produce a fluid we call semen that ensures now the sperm swims so the most important part in our case here it is the testes that usually now produces the sperm so when you look at the sperm the sperm just looks like this it has this part here we call it the tail here we have this part here which is called the head the head it usually have this part here which is called the nucleus which is the living part of the cell then we have the tail the tail we have said now this one helps now the sperm to move so once now the sperms are released by the penis then they are introduced to the female uh, to the female reproductive organ which is which we had discussed in class 6 the female reproductive system usually have the vagina which is the part that usually receives now the sperms we have now the cervix which is usually close to contain the pregnancy in the womb then we have this part called the uterus which is also called the womb it's where now the baby develops to a full grown baby then the most important part in female reproductive organ here it is the ovary the ovary is the one that which now produces an ovum ovum just looks like this it's usually a egg ovum. then in 
inside the ovum we have that part which is called the nucleus and as we have said the, the nucleus is the living part of the cell called the nucleus then we have this part which is very important which is called the fallopian tube you can also call it the oviduct also call it the oviduct so the ovary is the one that usually produces the ovum in female reproductive organ so it is good to note that both the sperm and the ovum they have the nucleus this part the nucleus as we have said is the living part of that cell is the part that in that has life So for reproduction to occur, then another process called fertilization has to take place. So we have to know what is fertilization. So fertilization is the union or the fusion of the nuclei of ovum and the sperm. There are two types of fertilization. One, we have internal fertilization. The word internal here, it means inside. So internal fertilization is that fertilization that takes place inside the female's body and this one happens to animals like human beings, birds, carnivores, omnivores, herbivores, and many other animals. Then we have the second type of fertilization that is external fertilization that the word external itself means outside. So external fertilization is that fertilization that takes place outside the female's body and it happens in animals like in fish and amphibians. So we have to look at the process of fertilization in human beings. And for us to understand the process of fertilization in human beings, we have to have this diagram of female reproductive organ which we said or which we saw it looks like this it has several parts so here we have the vagina or the birth canal here we have the womb or what you call uterus then here we have the ovary which produces the ovum and then here we have the oviduct So during the sexual intercourse or what you call copulation, the sperms are introduced to the vagina by the penis. The sperms are introduced to this part we call the vagina or the birth canal by uh, the penis. This part is the part we call the penis. So it introduces the sperms in the vagina so once they are introduced in the vagina then they sweep upward in this part uterus here the sperms are usually produced in millions and millions so as they move upward here they keep on competing knocking one another until they come some will go this way others will go the other way until they find now a mature ovum in this place here which we call the oviduct so when now the amateur sperm fuses with a mature ovum then we say fertilization has taken place we say now fertilization has taken place it is good to note that it's only one sperm that penetrate the ovum and once the nuclei, which we said now, these are the living part of those cells, both the sperm and the ovum fuse. 
we say now fertilization has taken place. Immediately after the fertilization, a living organism called zygote, it is formed. And that, at that particular point, the woman, we say, has become pregnant. The woman has become pregnant. As we have said, the only part of the cells, these are the reproductive cells that fuses, are the nuclei, not any other part. All the other parts are left outside. So once they are left outside, they are destroyed by the hormones that are produced in the female reproductive organ and then they are removed out during the process of urination. In our previous lesson we had talked about fertilization as the union of the male and female nuclei and we say now immediately after fertilization a living organism called zygote it is formed. So today we look at what happens after that zygote it is formed. In our topic it will be fetal development. We are going to know what is this fetal it comes from the word fetus but before we go to the word fetus then we have to look at the development of zygote so after the zygote is formed in the oviduct it will take around three to six days to travel from the oviduct or the fallopian tube to the uterus once it is in the uterus it will attach itself in already thickened upper uterine wall so if you look at our diagram here we have this is the upper uterine wall this is where now we have this part which is the thickened upper uterine wall where now the zygote usually attaches itself there so the attachment of that zygote in that upper uterine wall is the what is what we refer to as implantation is what we call implantation so what happens after implantation after the implantation the zygote is called embryo it changes its name or it changes from being a zygote also it changes from being a zygote to embryo it's a change it changes from being a zygote to embryo the embryo then develops a disc like shaped organ called the placenta that joins now the embryo to the mother so the embryo has to be joined to the mother and the organ that joins the embryo to the mother it is the placenta this the thing that we call the placenta a disc like shape organ it joins now the mother to the embryo there so also we say now the uh, the placenta is the organ of conduct between now the mother out there and the embryo and as we shall see later on it is also the organ of exchange it is also the organ of exchange it allows the exchange of the materials between the two that is the embryo and the mother the embryo is usually joined to the placenta by the umbilical cord. The umbilical cord is the one that usually connects the embryo to the placenta. It is this long tube here. This is what you call the umbilical cord. It is a tube that allows now the embryo to feed from the food that it takes from the uh, from the mother so after eight weeks 
of development, the embryo has formed most of the body organs such as lips, nose, arms, ears, eyes, fingers, and many, many others. How does this happen? During, the, uh, during this period, there is what you call cell division. Cell division and migration of the cell migration of the cells so those cells that are responsible for formation of a particular organs in the body they move from different locations where they were found in those cells then they combine to form these organs these are the lips the nose uh, uh, the fingers, the ears, eyes, arms. So at the point of eight weeks or two months, now the embryo changes to another thing that is the fetus. It changes from being an embryo to a fetus. So the fetus continues to develop in the womb it continues to develop in the womb until it's around nine months when the woman is ready to give birth so the fetus as it is formed it is surrounded by harmonion harmonion is just a bag or a sack that contains a liquid called amniotic fluid. The amniotic fluid, it has so many functions in the womb, in the development of the fetus. So this is the sac that I'm calling the aminion or the amniotic sac. It has those two names. You can call it the aminion or you can call it the amniotic sac. It contains a fluid. The fluid that is inside there is the one which we call the amniotic fluid. The amniotic fluid. So as we continue down, we are going to see what are the functions of this amniotic fluid.